Okay, today we're going to look at how the images reflect off curved mirrors. So straight mirrors, remember, flat mirrors, we had same size, same distance away, the image was the same distance away from the mirror, and the only thing that was flipped was left to right. What's going to happen now with curved mirrors is we're going to not necessarily be the same size, quite often it'll be bigger or smaller, and quite often the images also gets flipped upside down. So we have two types of mirrors, a concave mirror. So we'll think of if we had like a sphere and we cut it in half, concave would be the inside of it, and convex then is looking at the outside. So concave would be the inside of your spoon if you look at your reflection, convex would be on the back side or the, the curvy side of the spoon. Concave mirrors actually will converge. We call them converging mirrors. And we're going to look at that in a second. A couple of key definitions. We think of the center as being, if we extended this mirror, this sphere, if we made it a full circle, the center would be the center of the sphere. So think of the center as being sort of like the radius of the sphere, and then the focus point ends up being halfway. So the focus is halfway of the distance. So that's a key key thing to remember, the focus is halfway. Principal axis, we just, we just draw a line that goes horizontal through the center and focus point and we call the vertex where the mirror meets the principal axis. Those two aren't that big of a deal, but you have to be able to locate the focus point. So to try to figure out how we're going to draw these, we're going to follow three rules, and we're going to do these over and over again, so you'll get lots of experience. What you want to do is make sure you have a ruler so you can draw the lines nice and straight, and usually graph paper the questions we give them to you so you can help you line them up properly. And we're only going to worry about the tip of the object. So what we're going to usually do is just draw the original object as an arrow pointing upwards and they'll usually tell you where it's located, what distance away, and usually what height and then from there you can figure out what the image is going to be. So the first rule that we do is we draw from the tip of the object we go down through the focal point and then we reflect back parallel. So any ray that goes through the focus point reflects back parallel. Our second rule then is basically just the opposite. If we go parallel hits the mirror, it's going to reflect back through the focal point. So where these two lines intersect, you can see that'll be where our image is. So you can see in this case our intersection point's below the principal axis, so that means our image then is going to be upside down, and you can see it's a little bit smaller. Okay, a couple of key definitions that we, we talk about. If it's bigger or smaller, sometimes we'll write it as enlarged or diminished or the same size. If, the, if it's pointing upwards, we usually say it's erect. If it's pointing downwards, we say down or inverted. And if it's a real image, what that means is it's in front of the mirror. It reflected back in front of the mirror. If it ends up reflecting on the other side of the mirror, then we'd call it a virtual image. So in that previous example, we would say it's smaller or diminished, inverted or upside down, and it's a real in front of the mirror image. The third rule it actually works the same, and we don't need to use all three, usually two of the three is good enough, but the third rule says if we go through the center of the image, or center of the mirror, then it'll reflect back. So if we extended this mirror, it would hit the mirror, and then it would reflect back again, right back through the center. So you can see that that third line ends up intersecting in the same spot as the other two, so we still get the exact same location. So now let's see what happens if we do a convex mirror. So a convex mirror, we often call them diverging. So let's go back to that. So the reason we call this one a converging mirror is you can see they all converge to a point. We go through the focus, we all converge to a point, and so that's why we call it. Diverging then is more spreading out. They won't converge. So you can see if we follow the same rules, we would go parallel, and it would go through the focus, but we can't go through the mirror. So what we end up doing is we would reflect back along that dotted line. And then our second, or our third rule would be going through the center. Once again, it would hit the mirror and reflect back. But if we continued it on through this as a dotted line, we'd hit the center so you can see these dotted lines intersect behind the mirror. So in this case, we would say it is a right side up or erect image and it's smaller and it's virtual because it's behind the mirror so instead of 
instead of being in front of the mirror, where we'd want the image to be, it ends up showing up behind the mirror. So we call it a virtual image. Okay, there's a couple formulas we can use. So the first one is using the focus and the distances to help you calculate. So that means that anything that's in front of the mirror, we'd call it a positive distance. Anything behind the mirror, we'd call it a negative distance. And the same thing with the focus point. So anything in front is positive. So you can see in this case, if we had a con concave or converging mirror, our F, our C, and our original distance are all positives because they're in front of the mirror. But if we had a diverging mirror, so now you can see our objects on the front side of the diverging mirror. So it'll be positive, but our center and focus point would be negative because they're on the back side of the mirror. So that's the only thing you've got to be careful of when you use the formula. Make sure you get your pluses and minuses in the right spot. So let's do this example. It says we have a diverging mirror with a radius of 20. So diverging will be this situation. It's a radius of 20. So if the radius is 20, that means our focus would be 10. So in our formula, we'd write it as negative 10 because it's on the back side of the mirror. And it says an object is 30 centimeters in front. So that's positive 30. And the question's asking where, what is the distance image? So di. So on our calculator, we just basically solve this by using fractions. So if we go negative 1 tenth minus 1 30th, and then that'll be 1 over di. So in this case, 1 over di works out to like negative 0 0.13 repeating. So just go 1 divided by that. Just do the reciprocal. So di in this case is negative 7.5, okay? which it should be. If you look at the way we just did that last diagram, our image was behind the mirror pointing upwards. So our distance would be negative because it's behind the mirror. The other formula we use is to determine how much bigger or smaller it is. So we can calculate the magnification, which would just be a number like 2 being twice as tall, a half meaning it's reduced twice as short or whatever. Or quite often what we do is we just use the heights and the distances as a, as a ratio to solve them. So if we're above, so that means we're pointing upwards, we call it a positive height. If it's downwards, we call it a negative height which makes sense. So let's do this example three. It says for the same situation from example two, determine how tall the image would be if the original was five. So we're just going to use the second part of the formula. We don't care about the magnification. So it says how tall is the image? We're looking for high. Our ho, it says, was five pointing upwards. Our negative di we just calculated was 7.5 and our original object distance was 30. So we just cross multiply this. So the two negatives would be positive. So we'd have 7.5 times 5 divided by 30. And that gives us a height of 1.25. And it's positive, so that means it's pointing upwards. So our original height was 5 centimeters. Our image height is 1.25. So if we wanted to, we could actually calculate that magnification. So we just go 1.25 divided by 5. And we'd see that our image is a quarter of the height. So a couple different ways to use these formulas, but they're, they're pretty straightforward. And that's all.